Okay, so I uh, definitely did not really want to do this podcast today. Um, no particular reason. I just uh, didn't feel like it. But like uh, a lot of things with life, a lot of it is doing things that you don't feel like it. But I do want to caveat to that with being successful and stuff like that. Like, I think Steve Jobs said it best when he said that if I wake up too many days in a row wherein, and I ask the question, am I excited to do what I'm about to do today? And the answer is no. I need to drastically change something in my life because doing something over and over again that you don't like to do is fucking messed up. So that being said, even though I don't want to do this podcast right now, um, it's not really for any reason besides I just am kind of tired. Um, I've been up since four o'clock. It is currently 6.16 and I've been at work since six. So just got home. Um, yeah, it's just been a kind of a long day. Um, Monday, no, Sunday, I started and figuring, trying to figure out Facebook advertising and trying to figure out how to properly run Facebook ads and stuff like that. So I started an ad that got approved to start running on Sunday. So I guess I started the process Saturday, got it approved overnight, and then it um, started running on Sunday afternoon-ish. Um, and ran until, let's see, today's Tuesday, so ran until Monday night, and then I realized that the link that I had linked to the website was going to the wrong page that I wanted. So I edited that and edited one of the types, the copy, some of the copy that was in the ad itself, and now I'm still waiting for it to get approved, and it's Tuesday night, so it's kind of taking a long time to wait to get confused to get approved again um not sure why that is it might have something to do with it's alcohol being alcohol related but mm, i don't really know for sure um yeah i don't i don't i don't really know so i know the last time i kind of talked about my history a little bit um i guess going forward um i can start talking about how i started dionysus which is the parent company of Lucy butler and then um, kind of build from that. So, um, and let's see, 2018, I was working on, let's see, oh, not 2018, 2017. 2017, I was working for the Lafayette Beer League, which is one of my buddy's companies. Um, we were basically a craft beer advocacy group for Indiana craft beer specifically. Um, we did a couple cool things, um, did beers across the Wabash, um, did a uh, couple of uh, events on for local breweries and stuff like that. Did a lot of review videos and stuff. It kind of helped cut my chops with this um, vlogging slash podcast sort of thing. Um, but overall, it was um, I wouldn't nec- I wouldn't call it a failure at all. I think it's still kind of a cool concept. I think that it would be really cool to. Uh, incorporate that into an overall arcing company um but it was a little too narrow i believe for it to be super successful and then we also just kind of fell away from it um we took a little break in december to for the holidays um that's kind of a important time for a year for us uh i like thanksgiving and christmas specifically those are two important holidays for me. My family doesn't really celebrate Christmas or anything like that, so it's just a good time of year for me in general that I enjoy. Um, not really from a familiar reason, but um, or a familial reason, but from a, I just love the season. I love how people get around and start um, interacting with other people that are on a kind and loving front, and so that's really kind of a beautiful thing for me to see. So I really enjoy that. Um, and so, yeah, we kind of took a break. Um, during that time, I kind of kept diving into um, my idea that of the alcohol delivery sort of thing. Um, my buddy was less, I guess, the way that he, the idea evolved at first or the way that I had um, thought about the idea at first was more of like a beer um, shipping service. So, like, if you could ship beer across the country, how would you do that sort of thing? Um, 
and he had said at the time that it was illegal and I couldn't really believe that it caused a big fight um, we have since obviously reconciled um, but it gave me the feel that I needed to really pursue that avenue and really kind of just go for my sort of thing so I started putting together what would work and what wouldn't work and how to best go that there was a couple of early stage pivots just in building out the business plan which sideway segue about business plans um most of the popular articles today and stuff like that don't really think that you need a business plan and for like funding or anything like that and I would agree but put a caveat on that or an asterisk on that. I think that the overall, like VCs and banks and stuff like that, banks maybe a bit more, but VCs and um, investors probably won't look at your business plan because if you're gonna do a business plan, it's gonna be probably eight to 10 pages, maybe eight to 15 pages. And most of them aren't gonna have time to read that, especially if you're going to a VC. They go through several businesses a day, if not more. So they're really only gonna be looking at the executive summary and a slide deck. So, but I still think that it's important to prepare a business plan because it really helps you nail out a lot of aspects about your company, the fledgling company, it makes you research things into the market, it makes you research things about competition, about how you're gonna be differentiation and stuff like that. I think it's a really good practice to still do. Um, it's just not gonna, it's mainly just so you have a full grasp of your industry, less because of the um, actual functionality of said piece of product. So anyways, back to the story. Um, so at the point in time, I uh, <clears throat> I started researching about the um, company and my, how I wanted to form and how I wanted to do it. Um, by the way, super broke, still pretty broke. Um, so I don't think that having money or needing or, you know, being wealthy at the forefront is a requirement for starting a company. In fact, I think that it's honestly better if you don't have money just because you're a little bit hungrier, you know, you're a little bit gonna actually want it and take, take credit, take initiative and try to go after things. Um, but so I didn't have any money. Um, so I was just kind of working through a business plan, I had honestly no idea how to make one or write one or anything like that. I had no idea where to start. So, and you're gonna hear me say this a lot, I Googled shit. That's, that's, the, that's the single best resource that I can give you and anything in life is fucking Google shit. Um, it's like, I don't, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how, like, humanity survived, obviously, before Google and before this um, amalgamation of information that we have available at our fingertips every day, um, but man, is it so helpful when you're trying to find knowledge outside of your own wheelbase or outside of the people that you know and surround yourself with currently. Um, it gives you access to people that you would never have access to, it gives you, it's it's insane the amount of the amount the internet has made it, it a zero sum game for everyone where it's just it 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 will set the level playing field and it just is basically all on you with your determination work and grind and ethic and there's maybe a little bit of talent and skill but it's primarily work and grind and stuff like that so um so i started googling it i went through and found a small business uh, planner sort of thing. It was about, it was just an article, a uh, blog post sort of thing. I don't even remember what blog post it was, but it gave you the laid out of the steps, the different areas, categories, and um, broke down everything that you would need in a business plan, how to find stuff, how to format it and stuff like that. Super helpful. I'm gonna try to find it and see if I can't put a link to it um, either in the comments or um, the video version of the vlog. Um, I'll figure it out if I can find it. Um, so I did that, uh, put together that, and kind of 
went from there. After that, I started looking around to find entrepreneurial events and entrepreneurial uh, happenings. I stumbled across Matchbox. So I lived in West Lafayette at the time. There's a cohort slash workspace, uh, co-working space called Matchbox. And if you're in that area, highly recommend going to check them out. They are by and far the most helpful thing and has given me the most resources, connections, and friends that I can possibly imagine. Um, yeah, massively, massively helpful. Um, so I went to Matchbox, went through a couple of cohorts there, um, did a couple of classes that they had. There was a pitch deck class that kind of helped build out a pitch deck which if you don't know what a pitch deck is, I'll kind of talk about that a little later, kind of hopefully format that a bit more once I've gotten a bit better at that as well. Um, and then also they helped out with some executive summary. I met a phenomenal mentor through them. Um, he's been every bit as helpful for guiding my path and helping me sidesteps um, business struggles and everything like that. It's just been phenomenal to have him as a, as a mentor and as a uh, advisor for this company and, and for me as a whole. Um, so he's been, that's been very cool. Um, so I did Matchbox a couple of times. Um, through that, I was connected to a program at Purdue University. So um, I guess back up a little bit for if you didn't know what my company was, it's an alcohol delivery service. Um, it's the, I guess, if you would say elevator pitch, is it's a uh, on-demand mobile platform for alcohol delivery um, that uses a custom-built algorithm to define uh, specific taste profiles for each individual user. Um, the algorithm is going to be an eventuality thing. It's not quite built yet, but the platform itself is almost finished, and it's going to be hopefully launching here pretty soon. Um, so that's that's what the company was. So I obviously at this point in time had no app. I had no tech or anything like that. I don't know how to code. I don't know how to build out any of those types of things like that. So I, I was very much lost in the sauce at this point. Um, but I had a lot of people that helped me. So um, my mentor, Landon, he uh, pointed me to a... Um, it was a program at Purdue University called User Design Experience Studio. And basically what it is, is um, a senior design class for user interface and user experience. Um, come in and you get, you basically apply to it. If you get selected, um, you have, I think I had eight students plus a team lead. So nine students who over the course of a semester worked on building out a they worked on building out what you asked for them, um, whether that was a website page or um, something else like that. I particularly asked for a high fidelity interactive mock-up, um, which they built on Figma. So it gave me the ability to um, show somebody kind of what I was looking for, what I was going for with the app itself and be able to click through like stuff in a almost virtual reality, not virtual reality, but like a, virtual box sort of thing. It wasn't gonna it wasn't gonna connect to anything. There was gonna be no payment processing. There's nothing fancy about it. It was literally just basically a fancy PowerPoint slide that you could click on spots and have it go to another page to kind of show the flow of the uh, um, app itself. So that was cool. I really appreciated it. That class was amazing. The people that I met in that class were amazing. Um, at some point in the future, I hope to be in a place to where I can very much hire those people or help those people out because they did phenomenal fucking work. Um, just, I cannot express how happy I came, I was when I came out of that class. Um, and then through that, with a lot of networking and grinding and luck, um, I say luck tentatively because I don't think that Luck happens a lot more when you're more prepared and when you actually put the work in and you try to find the luck. Um, rest is just kind of sitting around or like not doing anything. Um, 
So I was basically talking about my idea and my project with anybody who would listen. And I was connected with my current app developer, um, Ryan. And he, over the course of the summer, built out a functioning, workable um, app that works on Apple. And it's got a payment processing gateway, it has a marketplace, it has everything that I, it connects to the internet, connects to everything that I would ever really need from an app. And it is beautiful. He worked his ass off. And man, he's a lot of the reason that I am where I am today. Um, and so that's kind of where I am right now is we are in the process of finishing up the last little tweaks on the um, Apple or iPhone app um, to kind of see where we need to go from there. I started running Facebook ads, trying to get some beta users to kind of test things out and um, get a user base going so we can kind of build from that and get some momentum from that. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I am right now. Uh, today was, is a good day and I now feel a lot better after walking through that podcast. Fun fact about that, you, sometimes you don't want to do something, but at the end of it, you end up appreciating that you did it a little bit more, because now and I'm going to sit again and better in mood, and um, down to continue working on some stuff tonight versus uh, <laughs> crashing and maybe watching some TV or falling asleep. So there you go. Uh, love to hear your comments and thoughts, if you have any. Um, other than that, have a good day, and thanks for listening.